We previously introduced general linear transformations between vector spaces. Link in the description to that lesson. Here is the definition to review. If t is a function from a vector space v to a vector space w that satisfies the linearity properties, then we say that t is a linear transformation. In this video, we'll take a look at a few more examples of linear transformations that involve calculus. Here's our first example involving the derivative. Letting d be the mapping from continuously differentiable functions to the vector space of real valued functions, defined like this, so d just takes each function and outputs its derivative, this is a linear transformation. Once more, just to make the notation clear, this vector space, the domain, is the vector space of functions with continuous first derivatives on the real numbers, and this vector space, the codomain, is the vector space of real valued functions on the real numbers. Now why is the derivative operator a linear transformation? Well, let's verify the properties. The homogeneity property is straightforward to verify from our knowledge of derivatives. The derivative of a scalar k times a function f is just that scalar k times the derivative of the function, which of course is k times d of f. A scalar can just be pulled out of the derivative operator, so it satisfies the homogeneity property. The additivity property is similarly familiar. The derivative of a sum of functions is just the sum of the derivatives of those individual functions. So d of f plus g is d of f plus d of g. Clearly, the derivative operator is a linear transformation. Integration, although often a more complicated operation, is also a linear transformation. Here's an example. Let j be the mapping from the vector space of continuous functions to the vector space of functions with continuous first derivatives, defined like this. j of f is the integral of f from 0 to x. This means that our mapping j will take a function f as an input and it will map it to the accumulation function, which just calculates the area under the input function f from 0 to x. For example, if our input function f is 2x, then j of f is going to be the integral of 2t dt from 0 to x. Performing the integration as usual, this is x squared. So our mapping j maps 2x to x squared. This is clearly a linear transformation by familiar properties of integrals. j of k times f is just going to be the integral of that scalar k times f from 0 to x, and we can pull the scalar k out of the integral, which of course just leaves k times j of f. So we can pull a scalar out of this transformation, it satisfies the homogeneity property. Similarly, it satisfies the additivity property. j of f plus g would be the integral of f of t plus g of t from 0 to x, and we can split an integral across addition. So we could write this as the integral of f of t plus the integral of g of t, so j of f plus j of g. Clearly, the additivity property is satisfied, and so indeed, this mapping, defined as an integral, is a linear transformation. And that's not the only way to view integration as a linear transformation. Here's another example. Let t be the mapping from the vector space of polynomials to the real numbers, defined like this. t of p is the integral of that input polynomial from a to b where a and b are just fixed real numbers. So this transformation takes a polynomial as an input and as an output gives the area under that function between two fixed numbers. For example, if p of x is x squared plus x plus one, and let's say a equals zero and b equals one, then our transformation t will map p to the area underneath it between x equals zero and x equals one. Performing that integration to calculate the image of p, we find that it is 11 over 6. So this transformation maps the polynomial to 11 over 6. The verification that this is indeed a linear transformation, of course, looks mostly identical to the previous verification, so I haven't written it out. But those are a few examples of how our familiar derivative and integration functions from calculus can be viewed as linear transformations between the proper vector spaces. 
is. Once we leave Rn as our domain and codomain, the available examples of linear transformations become a lot more rich. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Mama. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.